Hi Sagittarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for a tarot reading for all Sagittarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, thanks to all of you for all the support. I send you love and appreciation right back. And if you are new here, welcome. I post new readings on Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. Fridays are always a general reading. Mondays are something different every week. So one week it might be a detailed Celtic cross style reading, another week a love reading, or even a law of attraction tarot card reading. So if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Sagittarius? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Sagittarius need to know, please, for the best and highest good of all concerned with Sagittarius? Messages for Sagittarius, please. Okay. All right, so we will start here with the tower, or the tarot. I don't know why I said the tower, dear Lord. Um, and then we'll have the angel oracle cards. Oh my gosh, I hope the tower comes in. That'll be fun. You've got the Knight of Wands and the Fool, the Seven of Swords, the Two of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles, the Four of Swords, and the Devil. Okay, no tower, but you know, the tower comes right after the Devil in order. So I still feel like there was a reason why I said that. Like there's going to be some kind of a moment here with Seven of Swords, Four of Swords, Devil energy. However, I do feel like it, it moves you free. Now, some of you, you may not be giving this much concentration, energy, or time. There's somebody here, a little bit of an annoying kind of energy. And so I feel like with the Fool and the Knight of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles, you're moving on to something here that's going to be new and fresh and beautiful. So especially if it's a relationship, too. Um, I feel like you're kind of in this place, this, you know, the, the Knight of Wands has you, you can't wait to do this in the, the full energy too. You can't wait to be here. You are, it's adventure, it's excitement, it's enthusiasm, trust, and it's beauty. And so, especially with something like the Ten of Pentacles here, of course, your focus is going to be on here. So I do feel like you have a bit of jealousy around you, somebody who sees this energy and maybe they read it as being a bit selfish or self-centered, but I don't agree with that at all. I think you're not here to play small and that's what this amounts to. So with this Knight of Pentacles, excuse me, not Pentacles, Knight of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles that's still in my hand, Wands are about expansion. Now, before we go too far, we have Earth, Air, Fire, and we do have Capricorn here. With the Knight of Wands, this is that get up and go energy. You take charge, you move forward. If it's something with work too, I do feel like you're in sync, you're in flow here. It still feels like it's a friend or somebody around you though. So even if it's work that's going really well, I almost feel like you don't want to talk to this person about it because they infuse negativity wherever they go. And so with this, you're going to be taking on some new things, but it's never going to be too much with the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands has you hungry for more. You have flipped the beast mode switch on here and it's not going off anytime soon. Now this can also be too, if you've really gotten into like the gym or physical exercise or doing something new there, or you're training for something, you're going to have a desire to continue with this. This is a really strong energy as far as starting anything new. Knights come in to get stuff done. So if you've had a turning point in your life, and I've seen some people lately at Planet Fitness that have really change. I go to a different gym too. I go to like a, a training facility. Plus I keep that around just in case I'm out of town or whatever. But I see these people transforming and they're using their phones and doing hit training on their phone and they're making a lot of progress. And so I do feel like it's something like that where you make gains with this and you see the progress and you don't want to stop. Now in a relationship too, if you have a new relationship that somebody thinks is taking up too much of your time, you also might have an ex that's hanging out here too. You're having too much fun to slow down with this. You don't care. It's like, well, you can judge me, but I'm going to continue to have fun in the meantime. You know, so I hear my haters make me greater, that kind of stuff where it's like, I just don't have, I'm not going to focus on whatever this is. So with the full energy, you've released all resistance. The other thing I want to tell you too, is you are attracting new people in this energy. People are attracted to this because there's no judgment. 
And so with this, you know who you are, you know where you've been, and you don't live there. You don't live in the past. You don't live in things that were hard or difficult. You see things as new opportunities opening up. Now, I also feel like with a, a new relationship, this person is just as enthusiastic as you are. They're just as into this as you are. And they also, too, if they're starting something new, like this person has a new job, or they're even starting their own business or something like that, or they're going off like they're into real estate or something and they're going off on their own, I don't feel like that overwhelms them. This is the kind of person who can do a relationship and do something like that. So it's taking a leap of faith. It's a brand new beginning, a fresh, new, clean slate. The fool is zero. So it's standing in the field of pure potentiality, which is great for manifesting because there's no limits with this. You know, like I said, you know where you've been and you utilize that to grow more. And so with the fool's energy, you jump all in. You're all in with this. And so with the seven of swords, I mentioned somebody's a bit jealous. And boy, are they stuck with that devil energy. I feel like they need the tower, whoever this is. Sometimes cross watchers don't like this type of dialogue because they, of course, feel like it's directed at them. It's like, well, I can't help it if you want to shove your way into a reading. You're going to get what I pick up on. So I do feel like with this, they've got an old pattern. And it's just their focus is on other people. Too much of their focus is on what you're doing and not on their own damn life. And that's why they're unhappy. And it's also, too, somebody who's very loose, like there's some slander going on here. Um, and I don't know that it's really to the point of litigation. It doesn't feel that serious. But it's definitely somebody who says things that are not true. And I think part of what they're doing is it's not necessarily making up lies. It's assuming things. So they hear some information and then they adapt it or they don't totally get it right. And they talk about you or people around you. And so with the Seven of Swords, they're not doing themselves any favor. Now, the good news is with the Sevens is that with the proper precautions, you don't have to get tangled up in this. You'll see it for what it is. And you also won't leave yourself exposed to this. That's where the tarot is your best friend because you'll see it coming and you will be able to divert it without it hurting you in any way. So you may find that you, you do recognize this energy, but you say, but it didn't do anything to me. And that can be just because you use your intuition and you use the advice of the tarot. So with the two of wands, you're definitely making gains and expanding. Twos are about partnerships, but with this one, I feel like it's more related to a positive relationship. It is not seven of swords connected. Um, with this too, it's a vision, okay, a visionary card. You hold the world in your hand, but you want a bigger world. You look at things, you analyze, and then you take that leap of faith. You take the action to get there. Somebody here, you've got money coming in. So if it's been a work situation that's expanding or you're expanding something in your own life, like you're starting something new, um, some kind of new venture financially, you're definitely going to make gains with this. So with the Ten of Pentacles being here, the Ten of Pentacles is a card of wealth. I mean, we love it. It's also, though, a card of leaving a legacy. So somebody here, I feel like you're going to be in a, a stage of, of your life where a lot of important things are going to happen, whether it's the new relationship that expands and ends up becoming a lifelong partner or a job that really sets you on a trajectory to grow and expand your career in ways that it would not without your current position. I hope that's making sense. There's something about this that's very important. Now, others of you, there's something unexpected that comes in with money. Now, some, I do get this too. If you are cleaning out clutter and selling things, getting rid of things you don't use or don't need anymore, you're definitely going to have money coming in from that. But you also might be gifted something too that has some value. I'm just picking up on that. So with the tens, their dominion, their power, their realizations. And so you're going to feel like you are in a very harmonious energy with this. So that seven of swords devil energy, it's just not compatible with this at all because this is so harmonious. I do, like I said, I feel like you're going to meet new people. And sometimes we clear out the old negative people around us because the new people make more sense. We don't halt our own growth, or especially our own spiritual growth for somebody who's not there so that we can stay a match. It's just not just not a good thing to do. So with the seven of pentacles, the wait is over here. It's time to harvest. 
money rains in the tarot, it rains money, and it also grows on trees. So with the seven of pentacles, you're putting in the work, you're putting in the focus, and you know that it's happening. You can feel it already. Some of you, it may be about matching up with this person, this new person. Now the seven of swords and seven of pentacles, when we have sevens, those are, like I said, positive numbers, even though they're a bit different energies. With the seven of pentacles too, I do feel like you'll be more judicious as you move forward about who you keep in your inner circle. There's something about that. But with the seven of pentacles, it's also manifesting. And those of you that are working on the, the physical body, you're definitely going to see results. So the four of swords, you may find that you've cut somebody out or you're going to because this is definitely taking a break from any conflict. So you may not go at Seven of Swords head on. I don't see that at all, actually. I hear, um, let whirling dervishes whirl. I feel like you're going to let them implode. Let them keep talking without doing anything to really stop it. But with the Four of Swords, the beautiful thing about this is you, it, you insulate yourself from conflict. I once heard Esther and Jerry Hicks interviewed about how they were cut out from the secret and they love Rhonda Byrne. They don't have any hard feelings against her, but they said we could have sued that production company, but we didn't because we knew it would lower our vibration and they went on to have their own success without it. They didn't feel like they needed it anyway. So I do feel like it's you being aware of that and not getting involved in this really. So the devil we know is it's a card of fears and doubts and you know, contrast and negative energy and limiting beliefs. And so I do feel like somebody you've been attached to thinks about this. They do obsess over you and they obsess over the situation, but until they change, they're not a match. And so I do feel like there's going to be an exit of somebody here. Um, it also too can be a card of addiction. So maybe too, if this person has some kind of a drug or alcohol problem and that's part of the deal, they're just not, like I said, in a place where you can keep them close to you. All right, what other advice do you have for Sagittarius? Messages for Sagittarius. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Oh, boy. All right, we're going to take this one because it went flying out and it was face up. Look for a sign, those signs and synchronicities are all around you. So their guidance, forgiveness. So whoever this conflict is with, we let it go with love, don't we? We don't hold on to resentment or bitterness. The situation will improve. Well, I can definitely see that. Now they've got take action and they've got reconsider. This is what flew out. So sometimes when we have reconsider, we let the universe give us more guidance. Let, it, let the universe guide us on our path. But there are good things coming your way, Sagittarius. I love you and I'll be back again soon.